You know, when we ate downtown, there was a Crespi store, and uh, they had good hot dogs at their fountain, and um, we could get hot dogs to go. Mm -hmm. So we always just automatically did that. I graduated at 59, so this was early 60s that we were mm -hmm. eating at places. Now, you know, 4th Street was there then. We had a show down there, right. so we could go. It didn't have a balcony, but it was, you know, a show. It was a black show, so we could go mm -hmm. to that one. There, uh, I had a cousin whose husband had a restaurant down there. There was a, uh, bar, a um, drugstore that was owned by a black man on 4th Street, mm -hmm. and a couple of barbers, and uh, some taverns that were black. I know when I was in high school, um, someone was dating someone, and and her boyfriend was mad for her about her going down to Fourth Street. Okay. So a lot of people I know when I was growing up, uh, sometimes we'd go down to get something to eat to go, and we sit in the car and watch the people. Mm -hmm. uh, I would go with my sister and her husband. We watched the people, but I would go to show down there sometimes. So there was always a lot of people, and if you were down there like on a Friday or Saturday, there'd be a lot of people out. Mm -hmm. down there. They had a couple of clubs. Mm -hmm. Do you know what happened to 4th Street? Well, I know that it was, they businesses bought in that area and people who lived around 1st, 2nd, 3rd, mm -hmm. uh, there were a lot of houses down there where people, uh, Hispanics and Blacks lived. And uh, I think they were given money for their house. Uh, some say that they didn't feel like they were given enough, but they were given money and so they they tore everything down and that the police station is where most of the businesses were. Okay. okay. Between Quincy and um, Kansas Avenue. Mm -hmm. Okay. And and I, we were I was talking to someone and they were saying, you know, there aren't as many black people in businesses now as there were then. No, that isn't. owned their businesses. Right. No, there there isn't. Yeah. There were two churches in that area of mm -hmm. Calvary was down around third and I can't New Monzine had a church down there around the first or second. And how old uh, were you about this time? I had graduated high school. I was out had been out quite a while before they I can't remember the exact year that they did away with the uh, that area and uh, t turned it into more business because Hallmark had a had a place down mm -hmm. there and um, there were already some businesses like Morel's meat packing place uh, some other places mm -hmm. do you remember City Park yes um, can you tell me a little bit about that uh, that's where you could go to swim and uh, uh, my friend Mona and, and our brother and some other people used to take swim lessons but I never did but I used to go down and watch them in their lessons and then uh, at night growing up there were a lot of baseball games you know adult baseball games and a lot of people would go down there in the summer and um, uh, come to the games. It was different. I think Ed Marlings had a team for uh, the uh, black players. I can't remember if it was white on there, but I think they were all black. Mm -hmm. And uh, we'd go and watch that. Mm -hmm. uh, they had a bandstand in there. I guess that some earlier days, you know, that had someone, a band playing, and people would go and sit around. Mm -hmm. Also with City Park, we had a Carver Y and about the 300 block on Kansas Avenue, second or third. Yeah, yeah. And that's the Y where we did most of our activities. And then we would, on Friday and Saturday when we were in high school, they would have chaperones and we could go down and dance and they'd play music and you could get chips and things like that. Uh -huh. So we didn't do much with the white Y, W or the white, uh, white YMCA, but in junior high, they came to our school, the white Y, and we participated in school activities that they would bring to us, but we really didn't do much outside of school with the Y, but we did have the Carver Y. And they had activities in the summer where, you know, grade school kids would come and do crafts. They took us on tours of our 
we had two potato chip factories here. We went to the newspaper on the tour. We went to Morel's meat packing. So they had different activities for us. Mm -hmm. um, if I recall, I've never found the reason why that Y closed, but I believe it closed in the early 60s, maybe. Yeah, maybe. probably. So it was after, I graduated in 59, so it was after that. Yeah, do you, were you, did you ever hear any reason why it was actually closed? No, I n never did. And, I, yeah. but, and you know, we had uh, basketball teams for the high school, the girls and the boys, and they would play sometimes uh, otherwise out of town. We went to, um, I didn't play <laughs> sports, but you know, everyone could, they had a charter to bus, and we went to Omaha and played a Y there, a black Y there, mm -hmm. and they went some other places. How do you think um, Topeka has evolved over time um, from when you were in elementary school to what's going on in Topeka today? Well, I, you know, we, there aren't any places you can't go now. Mm -hmm. And I noticed when I taught first grade and when we would work on things, especially in February, we did a lot of black, black uh, programs and things and and when you talk when I would talk to the children about the fact that we used to go to separate grade schools they were very uh, oh they were surprised and some of them you know would say like oh that doesn't make sense mm -hmm. and I was found that interesting that they looked at it now like you know well, God, that really happened <laughs> you know